So the French Open done and dusted for another year. There was actually a video on the second channel, Tennis Talk Plus, link in the description, with all my predictions for the tournament, not just the winners, but also the players that might lose in the first couple of rounds, maybe some of the unseeded players that would do well. Let's go have a look at the predictions that I got right, and more importantly, which ones we can laugh at because they were terribly wrong. So for this one, I think City Pass is going to have a better tournament than Medvedev. So pretty happy with this one. I actually kind of nailed it with Medvedev losing in the first round and City Pass going on to the quarters. Of course, he did lose to Alcaraz pretty badly in the end, but pretty happy with this one, calling that Medvedev wouldn't go as far as Steph. I think the qualifiers that are going to do well on the men and women's side, I think Karatsev, who also proved in Madrid that he can do well on the clay, I think he's going to be the best of the qualies in the men's draw, and I think on the women's side, on Draver. She's been on such a good run at the moment. So I was half right with this one. Andreeva got to the third round, lost to Goff in the end, had a very good tournament, one of the biggest matches of the first week, Goff versus Andreeva. But Karatsev, he fell on the second round of Tiafo, so not as good as that one. And he had a good clay court season, so it's a bit of a shame that he lost. When it comes to fastest serve, I've got to go with Bublik for the men and Sabalenka for the ladies. This was actually a very hard category to find the answers to, but from what I did with my research, Parks actually served over 200 Ks an hour in one of her matches, and her catch, he got a 228 K serve. So not exactly right with those predictions, but if you know the answer to that prediction, let me know down in the comments below. The players that I think are gonna have an unseeded run, making the fourth round or further, I think it's gonna be Jarry. On the men's side, he's been so good on the clay and had some really big wins on the clay this season. And on the women's side, I think Von Drusseva is going to have a great run at the French Open as an unseated player. So we get half right with this one. Jerry made the fourth round, pushed Kasper Rude to a close three sets. But Von Drusseva, she lost in the second round to Kazakina. And I thought she might be a little bit better since she's done really well on the clay in the past years, but just couldn't get it this year. So out of these two, I think Sviontek will do the better out of the two. Better than Sabalenka will in the draw. Of course, the one and two in the world. And they're both playing for the number one ranking at this time. But I'm going to go with Sviontek to have a better run than Sabalenka at this one. So this one was actually interesting because they could have played each other in the final. And it would have been really interesting. But Sviontek won the whole thing. And Sabalenka made the semi-final. So this is a little bit of a strange category. But I'm going to go with the Czech Republic. To have the most wins as a collective on the men and women's tour and also just ahead of america so this was a tricky one to find out as well but from what i could tell definitely wasn't the czech republic it was actually russia who had the most successful french open just ahead of america in terms of that czech republic only got like 10 wins combined so not the best prediction there on that one all right top 10 upsets i think faa Felix Ogialiasim, who's also coming in with an injury. I think he will have a big upset in the first week. And I think Coco Goff <laughs> might be upset in the first week on the ladies' side of things. So I got FAA right. He wasn't having a great season so far anyway. So maybe not the hardest prediction to pick. He lost in the first round of Fanini. But Coco Goff, she got to the quarterfinals and lost to Sviontek, as she always does. But definitely didn't uh, lose in the first week. When it comes to dark horses, I'm going to go with Hadaj Meyer. On the ladies' side, a little bit of an outside pick. She has played well on the clay in doubles, so I'm going to say that she is my dark horse for the event. On the men's side, I'm going to go with Kareen Hashinov, who is very good on clay, but he's also made two semifinals back-to-back -back at Grand Slam, so they're my dark horses for this event. I'm actually pretty happy with this one because Adaj Maia made the semis, and I don't think many people picked her, considering there was Jabir and Rabakina in her way. And Hashinov, he made it to the quarterfinals, lost to Djokovic, so I'm going to claim this one. Of course, the men's world number one ranking at stake, and Djokovic and Elkra is fighting for that ranking amongst Medvedev as well, but I think Djokovic is going to have a better tournament. So again, very touch and go with this one because they played each other in the semifinals, and maybe Elkra, if he hadn't cramped, would have actually got this one right, but I picked Djokovic, and he got through in the end. My hot take for the event, I think Medvedev and Sabalenka are not going to do as well as maybe everyone thinks. Of course, Sabalenka having won Madrid and Medvedev having the best season on clay for his whole career. I think both of them are going to lose early. So again, half right with this one. I didn't think Medvedev was going to have a good tournament. Didn't think he'd lose in the first round, but he did lose in the first round. But Sabalenka, she got to the semifinals, so that was uh, not even close. So we're getting into the serious stuff now. Who is going to make it into the semifinals? I think we're going to have Sviontek taking on Jabur in one of the semifinals. And I think Pagula and Kazakina are going to meet in the other semifinal. On the men's side, I think it's going to be Djokovic and Sidney Pass in the top half of the draw. And in the bottom half of the draw, I think we're going to get Sinner taking on Runa. 
And these are probably my worst predictions because I only got one out of the four semi-finalists right from both the men and the women. Uh, of course, Jabir made the quarterfinals. She lost to Hadaj Maya. We were this close to getting that match between her and Sviantek. Uh, Kazakina lost to Svetlina. Pagula lost in the first couple of days. So it wasn't great on the bottom half of the draw. Didn't think Sabalenka was going to get far. And uh, how wrong was I? But uh, on the men's side... It's a little bit tougher, you know, down the bottom half, the you know, draw exploded with Sinner losing and Medvedev losing. I uh, didn't think that Elkres would get as far as he did. I'm never going to doubt him again. But Djokovic getting there, I got that one right at least. And the big one, who is going to win the tournament? I'm going to go with the boring answers. Djokovic, Sviantek, they're my two picks. And look, as much as I would love to gloat that I got this one right, I feel like it was so predictable. I know Alcaraz was probably another po you know, possible pick, but man, I mean, Djokovic, Fiontek winning. I mean, we look back in hindsight, probably think, well, of course they did. So there you have it. That is the prediction video. We're going to do the same thing for Wimbledon. Let me know down in the comments below. Is there anything you want me to predict in the next iteration of this video? Of course, it's going to be on the second channel. So go follow that Tennis Talk Plus uh, link down below. But we're going to do this again. Maybe there's more categories you want me to put in there. Maybe some, I don't know. I don't know what other categories to put in there. I tried to, uh, I, th I thought really hard about these ones. So I, maybe you guys have some ideas. We can do that for the Wimbledon predictions. But I'm pretty happy with that. I think I got about 50% right.